Ooh, a lot of them. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Cat got your tongue. Must have done. As long as that's how she didn't play me. Right, tonight, because I realised that my how to cook a steak video that I did a couple of months ago had copyrighted music on it, so I can't post it on YouTube. So I'm going to do it again. Because let's face it, we love steaks. Uh, I'm going to do ribeye steak. Hmm. Nothing. We love steaks. Uh, so I've got ribeyes here. So first things first, I'm, I'm going to do Hasselback potatoes with these. But so I've got the oven on at 200 Celsius. A pan of water on to boil. I've got my two steaks. They've been out breathing for 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, so get a plate, some salt and pepper on it. Now if this was a sirloin steak or had a lot of fat around the outside, I wouldn't be putting fat on. But I've put salt and pepper on the plate, and you'll see why in a minute. Oh, we're getting adverts. Lovely. So. Rub a little bit of oil into one side, put that face down on there, and rub the oil on the other side. Really just a little bit of oil, this is just so it doesn't stick too badly to the pan when you cook it. It's not the end of the world if it does, it gets a nice crust on it. And I'll wash that later and put it in the recycling. And then more salt and pepper. So some, some chefs will tell you not to season it until just before you cook it, some tell you to do it a good time before. I'm quite a fan of doing it sometime before because I think it gives the salt a chance to, to permeate into the meat. So I'm going to put these to one side and go on with the rest. So I'll finish pouring my beer and we'll go on with the rest. What are you drinking? What am I drinking? I'm drinking the Williams Brothers Rubus, which is a grapefruit IPA. So I'm thinking this might taste similar to uh, a Brewdog Elvis juice, which I absolutely love. Oh, and it does. Mm, might even argue it's slightly better. But anyway, I'll get myself organised and I'll come back and show you the next bit. Nice? Yeah. Why are you not chucking away the can? Um, you can remove the top. I got this idea from Timothy Wakeford, Wakeford even, uh, a friend of mine. Saw it on Facebook. It must be a good friend. You don't even know his name. Yeah. So, cheeky bastard. So you take the tops off and you can plant plants in it. I've got a rosemary plant growing in here. It's in a bag at the moment because this was a cutting from a plant back home. It's really easy to do. You just take off a ring pull. If you've got one of these crappy can openers. And you go and just round the edge like you would a normal tin can. Fill it with compost. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, and you've got a wee planter. And you're uh, leaving the planet by not throwing it in the bin. Onto the Hasselback potatoes. So four potatoes of even size. Of those, a lot of ones, just the, the ones we've got left. So with a sharp knife. You cut almost all the way through several times. So if you come round here and have a look in here. And just do this without cutting right through. How far are you going in? As right. far as you can yeah. without going right through. Okay. Just over halfway. So I'll do that with all the tatties and then I'll come back. So once you've got your tatties done, just open them up ever so slightly. Just slightly. 
get in amongst them, just flick through them like that. And then, just regular veggie oil, you could use olive oil or rapeseed oil or even butter, but I think just regular oil at the moment is sufficient. Put a wee sip over them, not too much. Good bit of salt. Good bit of pepper. Some rosemary. If you've got fresh rosemary, by all means, you could use it up. Uh, I'm not using that plant yet because it's it's still just taking root, so. No point in me doing that. So a good bit of rosemary. And of course, the old seven years out of date thing. Sprinkle that on the top. Get that in the oven, and they'll take about half an hour, 45 minutes tops. The temperatures the oven. The oven's at 200 Celsius for a non-fan, 180 for a fan. So. Next stage is to get our veg prepped, so we'll come back once we're ready to do that. Oh, it's so nice. Right, so prep up your broccoli. Here's a, another wee thing I've, I've seen a few people doing lately, and it's, it's a really good idea. Is uh, having a, a stock bag in the freezer. So I'm going to use a, a food bag, and I'm just going to put all my, my trimmings. So, I mean, you're stocking your broccoli, it's really good for making soup actually, but if you want to use it for making a stock or a base of a soup, put your trimmings in the freezer, make them go a bit further for you, you know? Mm. So, when you're cooking green vegetables, you don't want them in the pan too long. You want them to be cooked quick, so that they're slightly al dente, but at the same time, you don't want them to be rock hard. Again, you want them to be green and not a disgusting brown colour. So, when you're cooking things in salt, the longer you're cooking it, the less salt you need, if, if that makes sense. So if you were going to put it in water for a long time, you wouldn't need a lot of salt because it will absorb it. But if you're not going to have it in for a long time, in the case of these, maybe three to five minutes tops, you need a good bit of salt. So for a pan this size, you want to make this really too salty. You'll see the results of why, so. It's a shit ton of salt. It is a shit ton of salt. So we'll get the broccoli in first. Easy does it. Get it all submerged. Let it come to the boil. So, green beans. You want to top and tail them. So just get a bunch in your hand like this. Dunt them like you would a deck of cards, and you want to take a centimetre tops off the end, the other end, much and such the same. Sounds slightly Indian, this. So that's been around three minutes. You want to just check the stock of a piece. There should be still a bit of a bite to it, which is great. And then you want a, a bowl of cold water, preferably iced. And what this does is it'll stop the cooking process. And as you can see, the broccoli is lovely and green. And that that's uh, overcooked brown that you probably saw in some 1970s pictures. If you're that age. So put them on one side, put them to cool. Green beans, 
even more salt. Believe me, it makes a big difference. It's really sweet. So, get them on. Grab yourself another beer if that one's finished. What time's that? And, uh, this is Otis. It's a big, bold, blood orange IPA by Williams Brothers. So that'll be about three to five minutes. They take slightly longer. Um, green beans, although you want them slightly al dente, um, at the same time you don't want them to be squeaky on your teeth. So. So same with the green beans, put the broccoli in a, another container. The green beans should be slightly firm and uh, they'll be quite sweet to the taste. I'm going to try a, a green bean let me know what you think. Mm. See what I mean about the sweetness of it? Uh -huh. Yeah, good tip. So, green veg, so obviously if this was spinach, you know, because it's in for, spinach is in for seconds, about that amount of water, but uh, cauliflower, you wouldn't cook it like that, so you discard that water. Why would you not keep cauliflower like that? Um, cauliflower, you need less salt but you would put lemon juice in with the cauliflower to keep it nice and white mm. and because it's not going to discolour the, the lemon juice will keep it white don't put lemon juice in green vegetables they go brown I discovered that by mistake um, but uh, cauliflower goes nice and white so I mean you, it's not like it's going to change colour massively by cooking it but you want to cook it to however you like it whether you like it crunchy or whether you like it like mush so it doesn't make that much difference putting too much salt in it. Uh, anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to what did I say? This chimichurri. I'm going to make chimichurri sauce. So I'm going to get tidied up, let this cool down, drain them off, hmm, and come back. Right. So I'm going to do my own variation of chimichurri. So. Chimichurri doesn't have peppers in it. This isn't chili, this is mini sweet peppers. It doesn't have tomatoes in it. It doesn't really have spring onions in it either. That's what I'm gonna do, because I want to. So, first things first, you want to get the zest of a lime into a bowl. And then I could chop, but I've got this grater, so I'm going to grate in four cloves of garlic. Okay. All that in there. Go throw the bits that you didn't grate out, because we'll still use them. And the juice of the lime that you've cut, uh, that you've grated. And a wee splash of vinegar. I mean, really, just a small, small amount. And then, I'm gonna put these to one side. Split up a spring onion. Good 
chop up. Spring onion at the bowl. Have a junk here if you want. Sweet peppers, we need to take the seeds out of them. Put them in the strips. And your tomatoes, cut them up as finely as you can. You could actually just put your garlic in there, get a little bit of salt on top of your tomatoes, and just give them a, a good bash up. Got all the juice and the seeds out of them. And so these are little piccolo tomatoes, really quite sweet. Chopping this until you've got a really fine mix. So we're almost at a pulp. Get them into the bowl. Want a good half a bunch of coriander. Probably enough. Stems as well. If you've grown it yourself on a windowsill, chances are it won't need washed. You can if you like. You can give that a, a rough chop up. Again, for this it's all totally dependent on how finely chopped you want this. I'm at that first. When you're chopping like this, it's important to keep your other hand on the top to stabilise your knife and just a rocking motion. That goes in there. Scrape the board. Some olive oil. About a tablespoon tops. Some more salt in there. Some pepper. Now, if you wanted, you could put a diced chili in here instead of the uh, sweet pepper. I've got chili flakes. I'm going to put some chili flakes in here. Give it a good stir up. So you get all then. I've added another lime juice into there. Um, because I've minced the garlic, it's maybe a bit strong. That's fine for me. Uh, if you're doing this at home, I would maybe start off with one clove. And you can always add more. Check it for seasoning. A little bit of oil. A little bit more oil and, and lemon or lime juice, even lemon juice is alright. It's to cut through the fattiness of the meat. Hmm. So put that to one side and I want the flavours to merge. Then we'll come back. So, get yourself out a heavy pan, get it on full whack. You'll see that's 
redder than a baboon's arse. Or somebody who's just gone into prison for the first week. Oh, um, dear me. And get some streaky bacon, smoked or unsmoked. Here's a wee thing you can do with green beans. If you can get into the streaky bacon, that is. So obviously you put your pan on when you think your potatoes are almost cooked. And uh, green beans that have been cooled and drained. Two seconds. And um, plugged in. I'll do it. I plug in through here then. Three, two, one, yeah? Uh -huh. Three, two, one. Mm. Like I say, just a few onto the board, wrap it up like chipolatas, put them on one side. Well, the good thing with these is they can be made up in advance, so if you were having a dinner party, which uh, obviously you won't be having at the moment because we're in lockdown, but these can be made up even a day in advance and uh, you know you can make loads of them and, and put them all on the bacon tray and cook them all at the same time so that's that now uh, all we've got to do now is reheat the broccoli I've got no salt in there yet but you just put a small amount of salt in I've got my pan smoking hot and basically it's just a case of checking when the potatoes are ready when they're almost ready roughly about the time you put the steaks in you put the green beans in with them. You could do these under a grill if you want um, but I'm just going to put them in with the tatties so I'm going to get everything set up and if they're all out together and it's all going to come together at the same time fingers crossed. Right so get some butter out of the fridge get the tatties out of the oven Give them a check that they're cooked, so a nice inserted should come out easily like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of butter on the top of each of them. Just, uh, just to give them a bit of colour and a bit different flavour. And then green beans will go in with the bacon. It's a we slice a butter on them as well. Now these steaks are gonna get three minutes each side tops. So they go in there. Now some people like putting butter in when they're cooking steaks. I'm going to see how these turn out first. So, pan has to be screaming hot. Steaks are up to room temperature. I'm going to put another small amount of oil. There we go. Just give it a rub in. Away from you. Away. 
just quite a quick wash in, in hot water. I'll leave it sitting in hot water. And you can use that for resting your steaks. So after a couple of minutes, you'll see just by looking at it how kind of far up it's been cooked. It's a nice colour on it. So we're going to turn them over. And again, make it the same again. And then plates. Then to get warmed. The warm plate for your steaks, get it draining. You get a bit of kitchen foil. So that'll be for resting them. And they're really not going to take long. So if you look at the surface of a steak, you'll see it's shiny and as it gets more cooked, as it gets to medium rare, you'll start to see red juices coming through. Medium, it'll be pink, medium well, clear, and then no juices again. You've, you've fucked it basically. So at this stage I'm going to put salt back in for reheating my broccoli. Not quite so much as you can see. I'm going to get a wee bowl. Some kitchen paper in just to drain the broccoli on. Because you don't want a plate that's swimming with liquid. So we'll come back when they're nearly cooked. You see that that's coming through there, that's nearly cooked there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take them off now. It's a, it's a visual thing. Some chefs like to do all this. You know, that's rare, that blah blah blah. It's a visual thing. You see the juices coming through? But for me, that's cooked the way I like it. I'm going to take them off. I'm not going to add butter to them. If you wanted, you could put some of your chimichurri over them now. I'm not going to. Put, some put a bit of foil over them. Put them to one side. Get your pan off. You could use these juices if you wanted. Pour them into the sauce. I'm not going to. Uh, you could also pour a bit of white uh, red wine in and some onions and make a sauce. But I'm not. I'm going to make uh, sauce a la fairy liquid. It's a really good way of cleaning the pan. That's off. I'm going to get my, my broccoli in, so... Mini trees. Can have three bits each. Just heat them up. You're not boiling them again. You're just heating them up. They're on a low temperature. It's just a case of getting this all to come together. So you rest a steak almost, if not as long as you've cooked it, okay? So next time you see me, I should have plates out and I should be all organised and my uh, bacon should be cooked and fun dabby dozy. Right, so I've checked everything, it's all cooked. I'm going to switch that off. Taking the plates out because they were really boiling hot, so now they're just hot. The first thing you want to do, drain your broccoli. That is each. You can obviously do more for yourself if that's what you want. But we're gonna have pudding maybe. See if these steaks have rested and have absorbed all the juices. If you want you could cut them up. 
I'm not going to cut them up. Okay, so pour the juices over the steak. dressing give it another good wee stir put as much as you like on this is very fancy oh, it's fancy if you go up and throws I suppose Just to make it even more fun, so you put a wee sprig of coriander in it. Oh, oh, and of course, if you're having a good steak, why not have a bit of Argentinian Malbec that's been breathing this entire time? Rubbeye steak, Hasselback tatties, bacon wrapped green beans, chimichurri, Argentina Malbec, done, happy crappy cooking. That's a nice blushing medium, I would have cooked it less but it's okay. Rubbeye steak because it's got fat in it is, is uh, on these steaks you can actually cook it, well done, it's still, still good. Right, can we eat them now? Yeah, we're going to eat them. Heard it? Yeah. So the steaks were slightly overdone for my liking. A bit perfect for your liking, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't ruined because the nature of a ribeye, like I say, because it's got so much fat in it, you can cook it as much as you like almost. Um, if I'm being honest, for most people there's too much garlic in the chimichurri, but I like that amount of garlic. What did you think? Yeah, wonderful. Hang on. That is thoughts? Spot on. Love them. Have you had green beans like that before? Mm, no. And thoughts? Tasty. Oh. Anyway, I recommend giving that a go. Happy crappy cooking. <laughs> <laughs>